So you may have heard of the uh, newly released KD Neon Bionic based on Ubuntu 18. This is a fantastic uh, Linux operating system, arguably the best implementation of KDE with the most up-to-date Plasma desktop. And it looks absolutely fantastic. In this guide, I'm going to show you how to dual boot KDE uh, Neon with Windows 10 on a machine that has Windows 10 installed on it. And also to dual boot that with other Linux operating systems, uh, multi-boot that uh, if that's what you wish to do. So let's make a start. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you're happy with KD Neon and that it runs well on your machine. So to do that, we're going to begin by downloading KD Neon. So just go to the KD Neon website. You can find that just by typing KD Neon into Google. Come through to it here. When you get to the site, just go to download KD Neon here. Uh, you can select user edition. That should be fine. It's also a developer edition, but for most people, user edition would be suitable. This will take you through to a list of uh, files to download. You can select the Neon user edition, amd64.iso. I recommend that uh, to, to download. So just click on that and you'll see your, your download will start down here. Now the other tool you will need is something called Etcher, which is a program that's free and that will allow you to burn a or write a, an ISO image to a USB drive. So again, you can download that. You just type, uh, you can type etcher.io into Chrome, take you straight to it. And then you can see here, there's the download for Windows 64 option there. So let's select that, and then you'll see that's started to download there. So at this point, what you'll need to do is you'll need to write the ISO onto a USB drive using Etcher. So run Etcher, go to select image, find your Neon user edition here, select that, go to open. I also want to uh, select a, a USB drive, USB device. Etcher will probably just detect that automatically once you insert a USB drive. Once you've done that, you just select flash and you'll see it'll start writing to the drive. So once you've completed the process of writing the ISO to the USB drive, you need to reboot the computer and have a go with KD Neon. When you reboot, uh, you might not be able to boot off USB drive. If that's the case, press F12 on your keyboard to go into the boot menu and select USB drive. Otherwise, go into the BIOS. Again, you press the Dell key on your keyboard, but it depends on the, the manufacturer and the BIOS in, that, in the machine. It'll be either Dell or it'll be uh, F12 or possibly F1 or F2, then boot KD Neon off the USB drive. When you're loading it, if you get an option to boot uh, KD Neon or the recovery version, just boot KD Neon uh, and try it out. If you like it, then the next step is to make backups of what you have on your machine. So to do that, just go down to your Windows settings, come in here, uh, go to update and security, go to backup, and you should be able to find an option there to make a backup. Also, I'd make a backup of uh, Windows 10. Uh, that's worthwhile in case there's a problem during installation of uh, KD Neon. So once you've done that uh, and you're ready to proceed with the installation, you need to make sure there's space on your hard drive to install KD Neon. There are a couple of ways of doing this, but the way I'd recommend is to actually 
uh, make some space on your hard drive before you install KDE Neon. So you can do that by just coming down here, uh, actually right click on the Windows symbol in the bottom left hand corner, type disk mgmt.msc to open the volume manager in Windows 10. Now you can see here that on this machine uh, there are quite a few partitions uh, and you can actually see that there are two drives and there's also a removable drive. But what I've got here is 30 gigabytes worth of unallocated space. Now I'll be using that to install KD Neon. If you don't have that, uh, what I recommend is just going to your uh, Windows C drive, provided you have free space on C drive, so maybe 50 gigabytes, because you need to leave at least 20 gigabytes uh, free for Windows 10, and then also say 30 gigabytes, roughly, you could you can install KD Neon uh, between 20 and 30 gigabytes would be fine. So what you want to do is select this. I right click, this is if you don't have any unallocated space. Go to shrink volume, screen comes up. Uh, it'll tell you the total size of the drive before shrinking um, and the amount of disk space to shrink. So it'll tell you the size of available shrink space in here. So what you'll be doing is you'll be using that, uh, that setting there. Uh, to determine how much you want to shrink that drive. Once you do that, you select shrink and what will happen is your C drive will be uh, resized, creating unallocated space. You need to shut down your uh, machine and again boot from the USB drive that has the ISO image of KUNION on it. On a Dell machine, when you reboot the computer, you need to press F12 and then it'll bring up the BIOS boot menu. Go down to whatever your USB drive is. You just press return. There you'll see it'll come up with the select operating system options. Uh, you want to start KDE Neon, so you just press return. So once uh, KDE Neon boots, you should see a screen like this. Just click on Install Neon User in top left hand corner. It'll bring up this KDE Wallet Service box. Just uh, close that. This will be the next thing that appears on the screen. Just a welcome splash screen here. Go down and select the language that you would like the install to be in. And then just click Continue. At this point, just choose your keyboard layout. For most people, it'll be English US. Of course, you can choose you know, English Australian, South African, UK. Continue. Now, at this point, you have the option of downloading updates and installing third party software. It's up to you as to whether or not you do that. That might slow down the install a little, and you can download these uh, at a later point after installation. Then a window will come up asking you about the installation type. You can choose to use the entire disk. Uh, you've got these two other options or choose a manual. I'd recommend selecting manual, particularly if we're dual booting uh, with Windows. So just select that, then select continue. On the screen it shows you the partitions on your drive. Uh, for this um, we have some unallocated space. We can see here 32 gigabytes uh, just down here. Uh, you'll find that the free space, you should be a, a block of free space that corresponds to the amount that you made available in Windows previously. So what I would do is just select that. Now what you need to do is create a, three uh, main areas. You need a root partition, home partition, and also a swap area, which effectively extends memory. I think four gigabytes is pretty good for a swap partition. 
So let's start with uh, setting this up. So the root partition with uh, KDE Neon. Okay, and it doesn't come with a lot of software. Uh, so you might need to install packages such as LibreOffice. So for that reason, I think uh, 20 gigabytes would be a comfortable uh, root partition to start with. So let's start with creating that. So change the number that's in there to 20 gigabytes. For the mount point, just select the slash like that. Click OK. So once that's done, you'll see we still have um, free space of 12 gigabytes. In my case, I have another Linux partition that is using about four gigabytes worth of swap. We can see it's swap space here because it says swap and SDA7. So let's just use that as our swap space. So you select that, comes up with swap area, select OK, and it should point to that swap area. Uh, if you don't already have swap, then use some of your free space uh, to create a swap partition. But in the remaining 12 gigabytes, what we're going to do is just create home partition. For all of these, apart from swap, for home and root, I would just leave it to ext4 for the, uh, the use as field here. Then select OK. So now we can see that we have a home partition, which is 12 gigabytes. It's not a lot. Uh, I would, ideally you want more than that, maybe 30 or 40 gigs, but it just depends on how much space is available. So once that's all completed, just make sure that your device for bootloader installation is set to SDA, dev SDA A. Uh, that's pretty much the default. That'll be C drive. Uh, for a Windows system, that's usually where the bootloader is going to be. Then you select Install Now. Come up with this box, just check in to make sure this is what you want to do. Just double check these values here. If that's correct, press Continue. So while KD Neon is setting up the file system, I'll we'll give you these options here. Continue when you're ready. So at this point, you want to put in your, your name, your username, uh, choose a password, uh, select your computer's name. So once that's finished, you'll see a box pop up prompting you to continue testing or to restart. Before you restart, take the USB drive, thumb drive uh, out of the USB port uh, and then just select restart now. So when you reboot the laptop, if you find that it freezes and just goes to a black screen, hold down the power button for a while, press the power button again to turn it back on. So you'll see here you're getting a choice of operating systems. Um, so let's go into uh, Neon New Linux. Press return. And there we go, it's booting up to the login screen. At this point, you just need to enter your username and password. And this is the uh, password that you entered previously. And now you should have KD Neon. One thing I mentioned at the start of this video was multi-booting and booting KDE Neon, not just with Windows 10, but with a number of other operating systems. So you can see from my uh, initial boot up screen that there are a couple of operating systems there. I've got Linux, Mintara, Kubuntu, uh, and Solace also booting with KDE Neon and Windows 10. You will find with your KDE Neon boot menu initially, uh, you will have to scroll down if you have multiple options because they won't all appear on that first screen. 
One thing that can happen when installing KE Neon and other Linux operating systems is they can affect Windows 10. And you might see that your Windows 10 boot option disappears or that the other boot options are out of order. If that happens, simply boot up uh, one of your Linux distributions. There is a program called Grub Customizer. Now you can install this from uh, the software center. You can get it through Synaptics Package Manager. You can also just get it through uh, just doing a Google search for Grub Customizer. So here you can see that I've got Kubuntu booting as the default entry. So if there's a timeout, then Kubuntu will boot. Now I've got KD Neon there, Linux Mint, Tara, Solus, and of course, Windows 10. You can make edits to these. You can also move the entries up and down. I would select save after doing that. Uh, if that doesn't uh, store the settings, you can also come up here and go install to MBR, master boot record. That will preserve these settings here. This is particularly useful if for some reason Windows 10 is not appearing in the list of boot options. Okay, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed that guide and uh, have fun with KDE Neon.